can go ahead and record now. No, nope, Mary is not there. Mary's going to get some water. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mary. Mary, if you want to set your recording now, go ahead and record it. We're live on Facebook. Brilliant. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Connection and Conversations. So human connection is the most powerful, immune-boosting, health-promoting tool that you have. That's my belief. And so I'm delighted that you're here today and that you're joining us or, or watching us on replay because I get to connect with this gorgeous lady. You're so welcome, Mary Farley from The Dog Knows. Thanks, Sinead. Thanks for having me. So a lot of um, the focus in my work, Mary, is on the physical in order to impact the mental emotional. And I get to connect with my clients through conversation. But you work a little differently because dogs don't talk, but they sure do know how to communicate. And I think part of what you do, Mary, is help humans to learn how to understand and to interpret the dog's language. And from what I've observed of you, the connection that develops between you and your clients, the humans, and then as a result, that ripple effect between the clients and their dogs and the relationship that develops between them and their pet, is an absolute gift to people. So Mary, can you tell everyone what you're trying to achieve with the people that you work with and their pets? Sure, Sinead, that was a fantastic introduction. I think you actually said everything I wanted to say there in one foul swoop. <laughs> um, I think for me, what I set out to achieve is, is really, I suppose, harmony is the word that comes to mind. Um, friendships, companionships, and amazing bonds. They're really what I hope to see between the families and their dog or their puppy. Um, and just touching back to what you said about communication, I love that. Obviously, don't, dogs don't speak the same language as humans, but they absolutely do communicate. Um, and they're very good at the nonverbal communication. So that's what they're taking from us all the time. So I suppose my mission is to set to help people to think dog, to talk dog. So when they understand the processes that goes on in the dog's mind and how they communicate, then they're able to communicate effectively back with their dog. And so Mary, then with the, um, the people that you work with then, do you, what, do you observe changes in the people and families and the dynamic um, and also in the dog that, as you observe them, as you work with them? Absolutely. Um, I suppose there's so many changes go on all the time, Sinead, but I think the biggest change again is around that understanding how to communicate. And it's like a magic light bulb moment for people when they start to understand how best to communicate with their dog. And it isn't through a lot of unnecessary talk and chatter that us humans are so good at. Dogs are kind of like, I don't need to waste time on that. Just, you know, let me know what it is you want me to do. Um, and I work with you on it. That's kind of the process of the dog. But the change is when people get it. Um, and especially when children get it are just magical. Uh, having said that, children are actually much more open to communicating with dogs than us adults are. Yeah. Which is quite interesting. Mine is in the background here, shaking and she needs to go out or something. She'll probably start barking now. Anyway. She's communicating to you, Yeah, I? yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. So when I so I'm awful for talking to the dogs. I mean, which is no surprise then why they ignore me sometimes when I say ask them to do something, you know. It's just like, ah, oh, she's still just talking. I literally have full-on conversations with the dogs as I walk with them. But um, yeah, many a secret that I've told them. I think them. that's lovely though, Sinead, and that's important to us. So we're here to talk about the importance of communication. So it doesn't matter. The dog's not judging you for talking to it and it's giving you a lot of good feeling and it's making you feel better. And um, we need that as humans, we need to offload and we need to speak verbally. So isn't that the beautiful thing? The dog just listens and there's no kind of two way discussion. They don't tell us we're wrong or we're silly. They just listen and take it. It, which Absolutely. is one of the magical elements of having a dog in your life yeah and, and completely unconditional love they're I mean they are so amazing and do you, so with with people then I suppose or do you get people that come to you and they just can't or they feel they can't connect with the dog or they think that there's something wrong with the dog or do they generally think there's something wrong with the dog or do they think it's something that they're doing or what generally what happens in that situation 
Yeah, it can be a little bit of both. What I find is a lot of people come feeling frustrated and, and mm. it's not frustrated out of anger or annoyance. It's frustrated mm. because they want to have that lovely relationship that, you know, we, we imagine we can have with an animal. So they come frustrated usually with themselves yeah. um, more so than with the dog. And, and I love that because they're the people that I can really see a great opportunity to work with. They want to know the right way to, to do that. So it's, it's a matter of just maybe taking it back a step or two. It's always taking it back a step or two, but yeah. helping them to maybe see how they actually communicate with their dog. Yeah. You know, to, to see, is it just that you're talking down at the dog all the time? Are you over talking? You're talking too much. Um, an example would be, you know, if we want the dog simply out in the pack to come back to us, we tend to go Fido, 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 Fido. So imagine that like after a while, the dog just zones out from that. Yeah, yeah, they don't hear anything. It's like a child when we nag at them all the time to put their toys away. Or if, uh, you know, one of our own partners tells us, you know, they want us to keep doing this. We just switch off. We don't want to hear it. None of us like to be told what to do. And the dog is no different. We like to be asked what to do. And the yeah. dog is the same. Yeah. So and there's lots of different methods of dog training out there, or is there kind of one specific way that people do it? No, no, there's many different ways, um, Sinead, but the only one that I'm really interested in is positive reward based training. Um, there are other methods and I'm sure you like me grew up in, in a different era where methods were maybe a lot harsher and um, mm -hmm. verging on cruel a lot of the time. Yeah. And I would have seen those things growing up um, and would have been taught and that, that this is how you deal with a dog or you deal with an animal because they're just an animal but they're not just that. They're a sentient being. They have feelings, they feel pain. You know, they need to be encouraged and their confidence built up exactly the same as we do. So for me, it's reward-based positive training all the way. And if you take the time to do that, you will have amazing results, but you will have a friendship that's built on trust and respect, not out of fear and anxiety. And, and so for, for kids then, in terms of them connecting in the world and particularly, I suppose, for children who are shy or maybe a little bit anxious um, when they're going to school, does having a pet for them or having a dog for them, does that make a difference in their confidence? Yeah, there's, there's no doubt about it. And that's not just me saying it. There's plenty of research out there to back it up. Mm -hmm. So for a child, especially, as you said, a shy, a shy child or maybe an introverted child, just having that dog to put their arms around, to comfort them if they're feeling, feeling a little bit low, to have as a friend, if, you know, they may not have friends. So to be able to go out in the garden and play with the dog or take the dog for a walk. Um, but also there's the whole area of trust and belief and not being judged. And a dog doesn't do that. A dog's never judges, no matter what we do to them, they don't judge us. Absolutely. And um, what, um, what about therapy dogs in hospital? Have you ever worked with any of them or, or not? You know, the way they bring um, the dogs into the hospital yeah. and it means that kids get to, yeah. well, you know what that is. <laughs> so yeah, can, do I, you... I haven't worked with therapy dogs myself, mm -hmm. but I have a nursing home where we used to have therapy dogs coming in. Um, and to see that moment, like to see maybe residents who themselves were nonverbal um, or who just sat in, you know, their little room for the day. Yeah. When that dog walks into the room, that eyes light up, the smile comes on their face, their hands go out to touch it because we all need that, don't we? We yeah. need touch as well. That's that's a huge part of our connection. And for some people, maybe they don't have anybody else in their life, especially if we think of elderly people in nursing homes. Um, and again, think of that in the current situation, it's even intensified now. So for a little animal to come in to look at them, you know, that's so cute and cuddly, that they can just stroke and touch. And the release that gives to us as a human to have that contact, it's like having a little from you know, mom or dad or yes. husband or wife, isn't it? It's that yeah, same. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thing. Uh, those, and does that impact the dog's health as well then? So, if, well, obviously, if, if a dog has been treated badly, you can see it in the dog, they will shut down. But in a, in a, go a good relationship with, um, with, the, with the dog and their human, um, does, it, does it impact, does it, do those dogs do better in life in terms of their health or are you familiar with any of that kind of yeah. I know it's not your area 
but I'm just yeah. interested. That's, yeah, that's no, of course it does. It's like this, this is why I, I always, you know, want to work with people, especially at the earlier stages of getting the dog to, to help them to put those things in place. Because remember, it is always that two way relationship. So the dog equally, you know, builds in confidence, grows its own confidence, and that in turn makes it makes it a healthier dog because then it's not likely to suffer from anxiety and stress and maybe you know less likely to be reactive so it's back to the whole socialization of the dog equally important for the animal as it is for the human can I just touch something there Sinead you just come back to me just when we were talking about children Mm -hmm. it's the same it's the same it's like you will look at children who have had connections with dogs or animals in any animal basically but they tend to be become more confident um, just because of that relationship they tend to have much better social skills so they might not have the skills for communicating to people in the same way but to an animal as I said it's not judgmental they you know they become more nurturing they become more compassionate they're learning skills that they carry through for the rest of the life. And that's really what drives me. It's I see the opportunity by starting with young children to create a world that is more caring, nurturing and empathic. Mm -hmm. So there's so many benefits. And that equally in turn makes a world that's kind of for animals and dogs and any other living creature because the child has grown up with the respect um, and admires an animal equally. Absolutely. And in terms of there's a lot of responsibility involved in getting a pet then. So, you know, if, you've, if you're getting a, a pet for a child and oh, it's getting closer to Christmas now and it, I, it's one of my pet hates that people go out and get puppies around Christmas time and then it comes to January and the puppy's getting bigger and it isn't what they anticipated. So what kind of, so it's really a family, it's a responsibility for everyone in the family, everybody kind of needs to take part and, and have a role in that, particularly if it's a young child you're getting the dog for, because a young child is not going to be going out there walking on their own, you know, the dog needs to be safe, the, well the child <laughs> needs to be safe, and the dog needs to be safe. And actually, I'm just, and in terms of, um, I suppose, building stronger relationships between siblings or, um, you know, because the siblings, we all, as kids, we all are huge anyway. But I think even having a pet around, it makes a difference to that because there's something that everybody loves and that makes it easier than to resolve even arguments or, you know, I mean, silly little things, you know. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's the silly little things, though, that can become big things, isn't it, Sinead? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And what I found, especially since, you know, summertime on, is that most of my work actually has been working with families. Um, and it's it's turning out to be so rewarding for me. It's something I hadn't anticipated, and it's took a natural turn to that. Um, but what I love is the message that it gives me is that there are many, many people out there, families with young children who want to do the best by the child and by the animal. And I just think I have to applaud them. I think that's amazing. So most of my work at the minute is through online consultations with families. And I work with them at the pre-puppy stage, mm -hmm. which it, it covers exactly a lot of what you said there. It allows you to have an open, honest conversation with every single member in the family from whatever age, young age to the, you know, the mommy and daddy in the house as well. And that allows you, because you're the neutral person there, it allows you to bring up the touchy subjects that, mm -hmm. you know, in a family might cause conflict. Who's going to walk the dog? Who's going to clean up after the dog? You know, who's going to go out and pick up that stinky, smelly poo? Yeah. And because it's coming from a neutral person on the other side of the screen, it takes a lot of those pressures away. Um, and I find that because I am neutral, Mm -hmm. you can have a little bit of fun around that and it allows people the opportunity every family member to say what they're happy about or what they're not happy about mm -hmm. um, and I think that's a great start then we can meet again when the puppy comes and we can help then with you know settling in and then you know even a few months later with some like basic training and putting some kind of clear guidelines into place mm -hmm. um, but it's turning out to be a beautiful piece of work um, and I, I just love the families I work with. They just blow me away. Nothing I think better. what you do is invaluable. I really, really do. I think it's amazing. Uh, I wish I had known when I, I got my uh, my own dog, as opposed to childhood dog, uh, almost nine years ago now. 
and oh my god <laughs> and I love dogs I really really love dogs I did get some help in the end because I really hadn't a clue what I was doing um but, but the I relationship love that, Shanae, that you sorry I caught over you there because I think that's so important I love that you acknowledge that and owned it because what I'm finding is people are coming to me and they're nearly afraid to say I don't know what to do yeah. And when they do, when they do acknowledge that, it's not judgment. This isn't about judgment. It's like, mm -hmm. hooray, that's fantastic. So let's now talk about it and let's see what you should be doing that you're not doing or talk about what you're doing that's not working and how you can change that and alter it. And when people are open to that, then, you know, then they understand, then they get it and then they see the change. Um, so thank you for just even owning up to that. Because <laughs> that that's always the first start and that's brilliant um, and I know you love your dogs passionately Sinead yeah yeah, <laughs> it's absolutely, okay yeah. To say that my dog um my my dogs aren't perfect I'm not perfect so my mm. dogs aren't perfect um but they teach us every day and I think that's something you'd agree with as well absolutely. Um, absolutely. so it's all it's all part of the journey so I always say to people don't think that because you're coming to me I've got the perfect dog there's no such thing as a perfect dog, the same as there's no such thing as the perfect person. Yeah. So, so uh, you know, so I'm just going to change this, this slant slightly, even though we have touched on health. So I'm my business is I work with people and looking after their health. And like I said before, I think it's so much more than, than diet and exercise and, and, and things like that. But as a woman, what does health mean to you? good question and, and health if we just step away from the dogs has always been an issue for me because i don't think i've ever given it enough consideration my own person. sorry mary your mic or you're are you rubbing against where you're speaking or sorry i might have just hit something perfect there, there you go sorry okay are we good yes, now perfect now crystal clear yeah i think for me um health is really a, for me foremost is my emotional health because i feel when i get that right then everything else falls into place. And, you know, I'm more able to take care of the physical health because I have the energy and um, my head is in the right place for doing that. But, but for me, emotional health is, I suppose, part of that is having learned or having to relearn to be true to myself because I think there was a long time where I wasn't. I don't know if that fits in with your idea of health, Sinead. Absolutely, completely. And that's an, and another thing, I suppose, with, with the dogs, when you see them, they are so in the moment and they are expert at just letting things go. It, yeah. it, it, like, and yeah. I love that I see that because it gives me that reminder. You know, sometimes we hold on to this stuff and as soon as we hold on to stuff it tightens up our muscles and it, it decreases our blood flow and it just make, it creates pain and mm -hmm. all these uh, knock-on I guess mental emotional effects so um yes absolutely I I, yeah. I do I I'm, I'm thinking the same way that you do around health very much so yeah, and, and that's that's great isn't it? that was a lovely description you give there dogs just live in the moment mm -hmm. so we just need to if we need reminding of something look at your dog yeah. and let it just take you back there because they do live in the moment but also something else that they're really good at and this is another big factor for me in health is they're also really good at um you know exploring and trying new things they like to be motivated and stimulated and i think we can take lessons from that as well mm -hmm. and for me if i was to compare that to the human way of thinking that would be around comfort zone uh, because health can become stagnant if you stay stuck in one place. Mm -hmm. So part of me it, for my, you know, emotional health and mental health is to keep learning something new, to keep trying different things, to explore new avenues. There's a whole big world out there as well. So, mm -hmm. you know, just get out and, and find out what's going on there. I think it's a really good sign um, in people's health when I see them and it's it's and I'm going to bring it back to dogs again just this because it's a good analogy. So I have two dogs and one of them always wants to walk in a different direction. She hates she gets bored very quickly. She likes variety. And then I have another dog who would be anxious and, and he's, he's a rescue dog and um, he didn't come from a, a great place initially. And so I think he still has a little of that in him, but he wants to go the same direction every time. Um, and I think that as humans, when when we're not curious and when we lose that part of ourselves, that fear can take over and we miss out on an awful lot in life. But like with dogs, you go gently with it, you know, to, to, in order to get curious, you just start small 
and then build on that. And then the difference in, in us as humans and the difference that you see in dogs is just amazing. And, it, and, people, and they become more, um, just more interactive and more physical. And I mean, I just see such comparisons between how we behave. And even though we're humans and they're dogs, there are a lot of similarities. So, uh, there is, and each dog has a different personality. So you, yeah. you, you're, you're spot on with that, Sinead. It's like you, you will also have dogs. And if you look at your two dogs, it would be interesting to see. I think you're nearly describing it anyway, is that, you know, the saying about is your glass half empty or your glass half full? Yes. Dogs too can have different outlooks on life. So look at your dogs or anybody that has a dog, look at it and figure out is your dog a half empty kind of dog or is it a half? you know is the glass half full because that will determine how you also work with that dog so you can use that you can look and say are they a more pessimistic um type of personality or are they a more optimistic personality and that will help you determine you know what sort of play you do with them uh, you know what keeps them happiest what will make them healthiest so there's so many comparisons isn't there I think we we talk absolutely about and you know what I could I mean I could keep talking about this for hours and people I know Mary she's gonna be telling us at the end about an event she's doing and I can't wait because I can't get enough information about this so if you're interested in dogs or I would say human behavior I swear to god it, because it's so relatable um sign up for Mary's event when she's promoting it but she'll tell us about that at the end and I will definitely be promoting it too um, I'm hoping that will be really helpful to an awful lot of you out there so Mary uh, if I granted you one wish what would it be no better woman to grant wishes than you Shalane <laughs> I, I think my wish um, is all about um, helping people, I suppose, to understand the dog better. Um, that will allow me to make a difference, not only for dogs, but for people as well. Because if, if you can open your heart, I know not everyone is a dog or an animal lover, yeah. um, but I feel you're missing out. Yeah, I can't <laughs> understand that. Sorry, <laughs> judgment. <laughs> yeah. But that, I think that would be my wish, would be to know um, that I can make a difference um, in the world and, and a difference for children to helping them become a, you know, a well adjusted, kind, caring adult. Um, well, it's I can vouch that you're already doing that because I know my sister um, is getting a puppy arriving today and they've worked with you and they, they, they found the session invaluable. Um, so I obviously had to chat with my sister afterwards about how did it go, but I knew you would be the perfect person for them. Um, and it's got, I know it's going to make such a difference to them because if they were to call me, um, you know, and say, well, change what should we do about this or that? They wouldn't listen to my answers for starters because I'm the auntie or the sister or, you know, um, so it's, it's just so brilliant that they had you to work with. So I'm delighted about that. And I can't wait to see this puppy and I'll be able to see it outdoors, I think, with the lockdown at the moment. Anyway, um, so can you tell, just finally, I guess, um, enough about my family and me. Can you tell well, us- They were about... amazing, by the way. They were absolutely amazing <laughs> for me. They make, you know, they give me job satisfaction. Um, and it does work, Sinead. Like, yes. It's when you open up the table for conversation um, and people are willing to listen and take on board. Um, and they had so many questions and the kids were absolutely, um, they blew, blew me away. Fabulous children. But I can see that it's it has taken that fear and trepidation away of, you know, the day the puppy arrives because you, you know how, what to do. And I think that that's just so fantastic. Um, so can you tell us about any events you have that there are going to be or um, what events you ha are going to have and also anywhere on social media that people can find you or how they'd contact you? Yeah, I, I suppose I'm, I'm most active on Facebook, but I am on all the, you know, I'm on Twitter, LinkedIn and Instagram a little bit as well. I have to just learn a bit more about all of those avenues. Um, but I do have a website as well. So it's it's um, www.thedognose.ie. Um, and I, you can contact me through either of those. I think Facebook through Messenger is the, is the ideal way to contact me. My number is 0861709804. Um, so that's another option. And then my little event, um, Sinead, is it's going to be it's called the Sociable Dog. And really, it's uh, it's a free webinar 
Um, and I'd love people to come along um, and even connect afterwards if there's any questions on the back of that. But it's really about giving you an insight into your dog's mind, to their emotional state, um, and also to have a look at you know, what happens to our dogs when they feel afraid or lonely, um, and then they can end up anxious. So it's, you know, maybe a few tips how to avoid that to stop it happening in the first place. But if it does or it already has, your dog can still be helped with that. Um, and that is going to be on December the 6th. Fantastic. That is going in my diary. Yeah. I will definitely, yeah. definitely be there. And yeah. I think you and guys should go, if you can at all, go to this because I know it's going to be brilliant. The last time I was chatting to Mary, you know, we say we're going to chat for an hour and then we, I mean, we just keep going uh, because I'm as passionate about dogs as, as Mary is, basically. I don't have her skill set, um, but I certainly, every time I talk to Mary, I learn so much. So I'm really, really grateful for that. I'm also really grateful that you came and did this interview a second time because my technical skills the last day were not as, uh, they weren't as, 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 as they needed to be, that I can't think of the right word right now. So I got some help around that. So we've streamed onto Facebook and the recording of this video uh, will go up on my YouTube channel. And I'm sure Mary will be popping it up somewhere as well. And I will publicize that too. So thank you so much, Mary Farley from the dog nose. Thanks a million. Yeah, most welcome. It's a pleasure. And some things happen for a reason, Sinead. We were meant to do this a second time. We do indeed. Now I need to say goodbye to everyone on Facebook. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Stop live stream. Bye, Facebook. <laughs> and stop recording.